I hope everybody can understand me. Can you hear me uh, properly at the end? Uh, I've got half an hour to talk about something that uh, has taken me years to understand, so uh, I have to distill things. But uh, I thought the best way to do it was just to do it. And uh, at the end, I hope I, I will have some uh, time left to reflect on uh, specifically on the projects uh, that we have been doing with, uh, using uh, exploratory modeling techniques. But uh, let's just begin, and um, for that, I think the best thing would be to start up my image. Uh, no, no, I think because when I do an exploratory modeling uh, session with customers, um, I have to talk. I have to tell a story first. If I do not tell this story first, they will just stay in their own familiar uh, mind frame and this might work because many of the modelers that I've met in the past tried to talk the talk of the business, the language of the business, uh, but uh, there's a problem there because the business does not know how, how to express themselves. They don't have a language to express themselves. Maybe we think they have a language, maybe they think they have a language, but in reality, most of the language that the business uh, uses to explain to us what they want is uh, something like a baby talk, because they think we are morons, and uh, they are so used to, to do it this way that they automatically fall into this uh, language, using the, in, into using this language. So the first thing I have to uh, show them is that I'm not such a moron as they I am, and that maybe I am able to understand what they are talking about. It's also the other way around. Uh, business is uh, hampered by IT. So IT is something they need. They have to work, uh, have to live with it for many years. And because they had such uh, a lot of problems using um, IT, they started to use the language of IT to a certain extent, especially finance, you know, financial institutions, they more or less talk as if they are uh, computer technologists. They, they try to help us by moving towards us to use a language that, we, that they think we understand. Nobody is, is, is aware of this, most of the people that I talk to I don't realize that this is uh, happening and that's why we are... You know, language is very important. I think language is very important and language has all kinds of things that are on a, a philosophical level very interesting to talk about. I want that now. But when I start uh, talking with the customer, I try to explain to them that the world that they live in is a world that we are trying to mirror into our software. And that the way we mirror the real world into the software that we are going to build for them is not the way that they think it has been done or it is usually done. It's, it's different. It's for us small talkers a, a world that we should understand and I'm a bit disappointed that in most of the talk that I uh, listened to up to now, this aspect of the real living objects in the small talk world is not you know, emphasized or Maybe it's too uh, evident for us, I'm not sure. So, but for the businesses, this is, this is important. I, I try to explain to them that the software world is a mirror world that mirrors the real world. But in a mirror, things are not exactly the same as they are in the real world. This is a mistake that many of the modelers that, that I know make. They make the mistake of trying to re replicate the real world as it is should not be done that way. The mirror should turn a few things upside down. And this is something the business also has to understand. So I tell, I, I tell stories. I like to tell stories and just relax. I tell the audience just to relax and let some of the stories come over you. And maybe this will help. And this is what stories can do very good. Uh, maybe this will help to put you into another <coughs> mindset, into another attitude. 
Uh, well, there are two things that I always emphasize that when you mirror the real world into the software world, things become alive and living things become dead. The real world contains living beings like yourself, users of the system, customers buying stuff. In the mirrored world into, in the software, those real living beings are more or less uh, incapac incapac incapacitated and they are uh, passive, they don't do anything. But the, 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 the passive things in the real world, like accounts or products or, or, or uh, transactions, they become alive. It's like a fairy, you know, with a, with a uh, magic wand touched by the, by, the, by the fairy wand that you become alive. It's, the, it's what I like to call the world of Roger Rabbit, uh, the world of, of Disney, you know, teacups uh, walking around. Tea makes itself. Doors open themselves. Stories tell themselves. Products sell themselves. It's always nice to talk to a customer and say, well, you don't need any account managers anymore because the stuff is going to sell itself in the software, in the mirrored world. And this is one of the aspects that I always, it's, it's a bit strange, it is more difficult to explain to uh, computer people than to business people. Because many of the computer people that I know are always working with data and, you know, moving data around. So after telling these, these stories, and there are a few pictures that need to be shown do you have a remote control? Um, I like to use it as a, as, you know, as an exploratory model. It's a very nice term, I think. I was really captured. I was, the term itself it's, it captures for me very properly what, what I want to talk about. <coughs> so for me, I, I like to see XM much more around, you know, like X. Still programming. This should be a. Uh, uh, we should make use of this. Um, I'll be talking about this. Sure. One of the things that also uh, amazes me, I haven't heard one uh, person talking about domain driven design. And for me, and I think this is very important for the small community, we have a, we have a few uh, you know, uh, sales pitches to, to make to think about. It. One of the fact, one is of, of course the fact that dynamic languages are becoming popular, so this is one of the things that we can use. Uh, the other one is that closures are becoming uh, popular. And, Suddenly, Spanish is not so esoteric, esoteric anymore, I think. But the other thing is also the domain-driven design. In domain-driven design, I try to make a uh, very specific split between what is business and what is technology. But this is a fairly official split, isn't it? It's like you hear in the domain-driven uh, 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 community as uh, when somebody makes a new language, generating stuff, whether he has ended up with a language uh, that is mapped to the solution domain, or a language that is mapped to the problem domain. And that is yeah. always the mistake that you see, yeah. that people think in terms of the solution, the tools you have, we instead are, of in terms of what you need. You know, we are technologists, we think in solutions, we don't think in, in terms of problems. That we don't, well, business people don't like the term problem either, but that's another story. Um, the problem domain, or the business domain, or the domain, is, as I like to call it, because technology also has its own, its own domain, of course. But, it's, it's, that's a solution though. Right? Yeah, and we know this from design, you know, that design we try to separate those things, but somehow in software, in the architecture that we, that we, that we realize, this separation is never clean. And I would like to uh, fight for uh, the understanding that we can make it completely, almost completely clean. The separation can be completely clean. We can make systems that are separating technology completely from <coughs> what, what we are doing in business. 
this is an example, it's just a small uh, you know, visualization of what I mean. Um, you have a component library and uh, this contains all the, all the solution components, all the technology that you need to, to make a realization. And the customer who wants to have a system will eventually receive something that contains lots of compo components from this solution domain. And I, when I'm talking to, you know, for the, for, the, for the modeling, for the business modeling, this is a given. It's not interesting. It's a standard product. We can, we can buy it from others. We can make it ourselves. It should, com it should, uh, it should, it should be a commodity. But what we own as a company or as a business is the business domain. The domain consisting of living objects that are mirrored in this way that I talked about. And usually this is, uh, I couldn't get this thing working, but normally I have this animated and it's breathing, you know, it's moving, it's, it's alive. And what you do is you, you draw these technology, technological components from the library, <coughs> you connect them some way using a very simple technology. We have this in, in, in most of the small books small books that we have, we have adapters who can connect technology with business. Using an event mechanism to know what's going in there and using messages to connect to the, to the, to the domain. The mirroring effect is a synchronizing effort. The only thing that you need the technology for is not because the technology is cool or nice. The only thing you you want to have, the only reason you have to use technology is you need something, some channel to synchronize business, the mirrored model with the real world. If you look at it, at, the, at it from this perspective, suddenly things fall into place. It makes it a lot simpler to connect with this, all that stuff. And if we do exploratory modeling, we, we can concentrate on what's, what needs to be here. And we, it's very important that people realize we don't talk about computers, we don't talk about technology, we don't need technology. In fact, technology should be invisible, even in the systems that we build. We only talk about this, and, oh, well, normally we have to talk about, you know, user interface design, or performance, or all, all kinds of non-functional. That it, it, it is necessary, but it, is, it, it doesn't have any impact at all for the business model. This is something that we can talk about afterwards and discuss. I don't know if you, do, if you agree. So these are you know, the uh, attributes of this domain model, the active, passive, uh, you know, what I talked about, active objects become passive in the mirror world and vice versa. The other one is uh, time reversal. And this is something that well, I'm going to show when we start modeling. Um, because not only active passive is, tur is, is turned around or upside down, but also time is turned around in the modeling phase. Also, I'm a bit annoyed that this time inversion te technique is almost never used. Does it, do, you, do you know what I mean when I... No. No, not really. Yeah. I did shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, when shame, I, shame on you for yeah. not telling that earlier. I'm, when I'm going to show it, some people, will, I'm sure, will recommend it. But I just put a label on it, time regression. And it's constantly moving, it's changing, it's alive, it's not passive, it's not data, it's not, you know, it's not a machine, it's not a clockwork, it's not a steam engine. It's, it's a living being that has purposes in life and try to be happy. Oh, yeah, one, one of the important things, and this is something that I hope you'll, you know, find a place somewhere in your brain and pop up later, uh, to annoy you when you're asleep and you suddenly find yourself awake, not as you mean, but not changing existing components. In the systems that I model and build and if, that evolve over the years, existing components are never modified. The only way we modify an existing system is by adding new components. So you don't have any problems with, you know. Okay, now. Now it's time. So 
I hope any, uh, is, is there anybody who has an idea about a, maybe a simple or maybe a complex problem domain that we, are, that we could do? This is a risk I'm taking, I'm hoping it will work out. Let's build a solution for a customer. Does anybody have a, a, a customer problem that we can, that we can tackle? <laughs> it may be, it may very well be complex because I'm going to show you that time reversal makes things very simple to start. There's always a problem, you know, where you sit with a customer and where do we begin? It's always very easy to know where to begin, and I'm, I'm going to show you. I hope. <laughs> I, I, maybe it's a simple problem, maybe not. Now you can choose. Um, I, I worked long time ago, and um, it was a. Um, yeah. company that has um, that, that handles in old metal um, materials and that brings to the customer nice containers the customer can put in some stuff in it and at the end of the year 400 containers are missing and now they want to have uh, some possibility to figure out where the 400 containers are ah ok <coughs> Can you repeat it? It's, no. it's, a, it's a, uh, a company that recycles old uh, metal, yeah. I guess, and this is gathered and put in containers, and the containers are maybe moved to a central uh, site where the, where the stuff is recycled, and they miss containers. By the end of the year there are 400 containers missing. Something has happened along the way that uh, they, could not, uh, they could not understand. Now they are looking for a solution. Yes, so maybe we should, we should track this stuff and you know, put uh, uh, yeah, RFID. Solution uh, domain. Uh, that's a solution domain. Yeah, <laughs> that's a solution domain. What, where do we start? When, I, when this customer is sitting in, in the same room as I am, where do I start uh, tackling this problem? I start at the end. So I, I ask the customer, uh, I ask the business uh, expert, what? do you want to accomplish? What is your goal? Uh, what's what's, what's the, the final situation that you want to find yourself in? You begin at the end. You don't begin at the beginning. You, process, you, you model your processes because processes will be modeled finally. You know, we're talking about business modeling and processes may be important or interesting. You model your processes not by starting beginning and you know and then you do that and then maybe you do that and then you do that. This is what you are doing in you know in business process modeling uh, techniques which is which is very bad and uh, really amazed that it's resurfacing again all the all the problems of workflow systems and uh, stuff like that. It's really terrible. And it's not necessary and it's really stupid also because many of the modern companies are not using that kind of thinking at all anymore. Model, modern management science companies are modeling their processes in a completely different way and always have examples from Toyota or Nike. So what is the final situation? That's, that's a question that we <coughs> need to have a final answer for that you want to be in. When are you happy? And I lose no more money because I have to buy uh, 400 containers every year. So yes, it's, that's, at that's the end it. of the year I will be sure that all my containers are on a place where I know yes. they are. Yes, okay, so that's, that's, more, that's more like okay. it. Your containers arrive at the, at the destination that they have to arrive to. So they have arrived at the final correct destination. And maybe they, they tell that, oh, we have a So this is the situation that you want to be in. So what am I going to do when I'm starting up my... Uh, I'm doing this, by the way, in a vanilla uh, VisualWorks image. You could use a squeak image. Um, it's not very interesting. And one of the things that amazed me when I was doing this uh, this stuff is that um, you know you, you have your browser, and uh, what I need to do is. Create a uh, package for it. <coughs> and 
do you uh, get enriched stuff in a vanilla image? Sorry? No, this is not a vanilla uh, image. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you realize that. This is my development image. Everything is in it. And I'm doing this stuff in a, in a browser, and, and you would expect, as a you know, as a developer, and this is confusing for the customer. I've never had this problem. I only tell them that this, oh, I have to do some things to create something. Uh, not important. Don't pay attention. What we need is a container. So I'm going to make a container, and I'm going to leave this browser, and I'm going back to a. Workspace, and I'm going to say container new. This is all I'm doing. I'm opening an inspector one. This is important because the whole process of modeling, when I do this, is driven by objects that I create, or that the customer creates, and these objects need to be embellished, you know, need to grow, need to evolve. They are alive, and they most of the objects stay alive during the entire session or several sessions. This container will probably live for a few days or maybe even a few weeks. It will completely change during its lifetime. This is what we can do in small but we can never do this in anything else. And what do you want to do with this container? Well, the container needs to self-arrive. Maybe at the destination. Well, this is something you need to discuss. Do you need more info. Is there enough information for the container uh, to, uh, to be happy for the goal that you want to accomplish, to be happy without any information or maybe you need minimal information. And I'm going to send this message. It's very simple. Uh, well, it doesn't work of course, but I still proceed. And what happens is that I'm, I, I need a few uh, extensions to the visual works image or any image that I want to work in, so this is for the people that can provide that, or maybe I should do it. Uh, I need some dynamic ability to change uh, stuff. Uh, well, this is not, I'm leaving this all declared, and I'm just opening, you know, a, a, a debugger. Well, in fact, I'm not even opening a, a debugger. I'm going to say, define it, and this nicely places me at the, the final step right before the customer is satisfied. So I'm already there. I already have built the system they want. The only thing I need to do now is to go back in time and find out the previous steps that have led me to this, uh, you know, this uh, situation of accomplishment. I'm, I, I am there. I'm already in heaven. Um, so this needs to be a destination. Strange, you know, you open debuggers, uh, you write code, and, the, and in all my sessions with customers, I've never had any complaint that this looks very um, technology. It's, hindering, it's not hindering them. It's very logical. And, and always I can show them this thing, you know, this, uh, this object. This is the object. It would be nice if, if I could, you know, plug in uh, some kind of a... Uh, logo on it or it will be more easily recognizable as a, as a real container but also that has never been a problem I don't know if you still if you are already uh, starting to uh, you know to uh, realize that this process of reverse uh, engineering or reverse time what is the last thing that I need to do before I can arrive at the destination Again, I'm going back in time. You need to so leave from my log to go back? <laughs> or something like that. Okay. Yes, traveling. Well, it could be unload. Let's do that. <coughs> this is one of the things that you could easily explore, you know? It's very, mm -hmm. maybe that's a good idea and somebody else would just say, no, it should be that way. It's, in fact, this <laughs> is always happening with the customer. There are several experts, and every expert has a different opinion about how it should be done. And even people from administration would look at the same problem domain from a completely different perspective than you know what I mean. It's very exciting. Self-unload un it. 
uh, destination of the same situation. And this is exactly the same as what I did before. This is leading to the same problem. And again, we define it. This method does not exist. Uh, well, I'm all, almost at the end of time. Um, I hope it sounds, it, it looks, maybe it looks very simple, but this is leading to a sort, sort of a tree of all kinds of steps that may lead to this final moment of ultimate happiness. Um, and all people that are involved, you know, administration, sales, the product builders, uh, the, the drivers in the, in the container uh, vehicles, all people have their say, and maybe they all have something to add to this, to this, well, it's, it's like a semantic web. And this is leading to a perfect solution. And when actually the system is executing after it has been built, you will find that it is a system that is uh, non-deterministic. It will decide what is the best path or the best way to, to, to get to this end situation by, you know, because, because the objects are more or less intelligent. There's one thing that I have not added yet in this system is the time awareness and uh, that they can find out scenarios. This is a subject that I don't want to talk about now, but I'm def you will definitely hear from me in the future about uh, combining simulation uh, technology with object modeling to build systems that are time aware. This, this might be very interesting. Now, just a few of, uh, reflections on this project. We did this, we built, uh, I was very happy that we had a customer that had a very complex uh, problem with mine. Uh, I built a few uh, inspector e extensions because I needed inspectors that would show me what, uh, some more complicated uh, structures than the regular inspectors do in, in visual works. Uh, and I had to be able to drag and drop. This is very important for customers at IKEA because they were starting after a few days modeling, building their own models, you know, dragging objects around in small world. But that's all, and the uh, experience that I had was really amazing because uh, they were well, they were ecstatic. It's very strange to uh, to describe, but they never had had uh, an experience like this, you know, uh, in the <coughs> domain. They also had an experience which is somewhat familiar for most of you, I, I think, that they suddenly understood their own business, their own problem domain a lot better than before the sessions. Uh, or even looked at their problem domain from a completely different perspective than before, before the sessions. And I must admit, this is, of course, it's a goal that I want to achieve. Um, and I think it's really great. It's, it's, it's really amazing. So I need to stop. And, and there's, there's a bit, a little time for a question. Have you made any uh, publicly available uh, publications? Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm constantly blogging up about it, and I started with a book. I can't read it. I shouldn't say this here because uh, you, you'll never know what happens. Um, I have, you know, I have these tools on my website where you can do your own uh, uh, financing uh, application, and I'm rewriting that application because that is, is, is more than 10 years old. I started uh, working on it when these ideas were not so very explicit, and I'm using this personal finance system as a model or as an example for modeling and building systems this way. And so this, this might be interesting. I'm going to publish this in bits and bytes because I don't believe in making a book and then when the book is finished showing it to the it should grow. You know, I think that I can have it. Okay, so there are a few, but, and, and we should really use you know things from domain driven design, but the, the problem with domain driven design is that it is too much technology focused. Mm -hmm. and I like Eric Evans, uh, and I think it's, well, it's a good thing, but it's very technology driven, it's very technology focused. On the other hand, I gave you those two terms that were industry standard terms, uh, uh, problem domain and solution domain. These are the terms you use. Yeah. Yeah. You describe <coughs> a lot more words for so. Uh, I'm pushing like maybe just use those two terms in very concise. Yes. Uh, I think that exactly what you're trying to say. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. Domain-driven design is also very popular. You know, it's it's, yeah. a, it's a hype at the moment.
I don't know if you would, if you would know this. Normally it's predefined model design, driven design. It means so it's not do, it's not model driven design, it's domain driven. Domain uh oh, yeah, okay, sorry. It's different. Yeah. It's not UML I'm talking about, you know. Domain driven design is a is a designer, an architecture of a system that is driven by the domain model, which is central, and just as I showed you, you know, the visualization, which is central in your architecture. More questions. You said you'd uh, enhance the inspectors with rag rock so that the customers can understand. Do you find yourself <coughs> with, for example, time constructs enhancing them with just messages and ways of doing it so that you can actually make the message, the message more readable? <coughs> uh, the session not point you to anything that well, is it's, not it's, as expressive as it's. I'm, I'm not sure if I understand you correctly, but small but usually is simple enough that. It looks like the normal language that they use. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, but an export important part. I want to say that uh, before the time is up. Uh, I built a, an XMI export so that all these models are built and they can run. You know, it's, they are not just uh, a model like a UML model. They are behavior. They are active. The objects do things. It's exported into XMI. It's imported into C sharp. For this project, it was imported into C sharp. And uh, <coughs> The C sharp programmers uh, saw before them all the class structures done for them already, and they saw the methods within the comments, the small of code that implemented that method. But this was so trivial that you could hire a beginning C sharp programmer with a few weeks of small book, uh, small book uh, training to do the translation. I, I don't believe that you can do this, you can, that you can ever do this uh, you know, automatically. It should be should be human and told. It was a trivial, a trivial and simple exercise. So you don't uh, build a final system in Smalltalk, you just use it... For this customer it was not built, the final system was not uh, in Smalltalk, it was a, it was a .NET uh, application. <coughs> of course, we, I'm not talking about user interfaces and I'm not talking about the database connections or consistency or anything, but all that was uh, plugged into the domain, you could even run a server with a VisualWorks image on it, serving the business domain and firing up events by non Smalltalk systems, which then connect to a user interface or a database. And, and the way I connect, the, for example, the user interface with the domain or the database with the domain is exactly the same. It's, there's no difference. The same plugin system is used. Those parts. This is another story. So, my exporter is, is available in the uh, public or repository. Any questions? Any other questions? And I'm happy to talk afterwards, of course. I have to stop it. My time's up. Thank you.